Welcome to the Palm Beach Beater chassis assembly walkthrough. We're going to start off doing the front wall, which requires two pieces of the corner nut strip and four of the quarter inch 440 screws. Now make sure when you put it together, you note the orientation. Um, the nut strip goes on the inside of the wall. And on the right side, the threaded hole for the corner faces to the outside. On the left side, the thread hole for the corner faces towards the bottom. And make sure to leave everything loose as you install it. Uh, once everything is all together, we'll get it nice and snug at the end. As we finish the, uh, the nut strip on the front wall, uh, the next step will be putting the single 2x1 nut strip onto the back of the bottom plate with two of the 440 quarter inch screws. Now we'll be assembling the, uh, the bottom plate to the front wall. That uh, uses two more of the quarter inch 440 screws. And they're gonna go in from the bottom into the nut strip you already put onto the front wall. After those get attached, we'll move on to the back wall, which will loosely attach at this point um, just with one 440 quarter inch in the middle. And that's the middle mounting point. The other two mounting points mount to the side walls once we get those ready. Now that that's all popped together, I will start putting the nut strip on the side walls. Uh, we'll do this with the longer 440 screws, the 7 16 inch. Uh, we'll use one um, corner nut strip piece on each side wall. Make sure you note the orientation because the side walls are interchangeable. Um, so they have holes provisioned for either side you want to use them on. Um, but you do need to make sure the nut strips on the proper side of the wall so everything lines up together when you when you do final assembly. And you'll notice some kind of slightly curved areas on the back of the sidewalls. Um, those are there so your robot doesn't do the thing. Um, so there's no way for it to end up stuck on its back, not able to move. If it ends up that way, it'll either fall forward or fall to upside down and then you can drive around and take care of what you need to do. Once we get these pieces of nut strip on, uh, no, note that the threaded hole of the corner goes to the top on these because that's where the rear of the lid attaches. And now we'll start attaching them to the, the chassis we, we've been building so far. Um, the front end of them goes in with the 17th or the 7 16 440. On the left side, it'll go through the top hole and the side wall. And on the right side, it's going to use the bottom hole. At the rear of the robot, you'll use a quarter inch 440 on each side to attach the rear wall to the nut strip you just attached to the rear of the uh, side wall. And once again, make sure you, you leave everything loose here. We'll, we'll tighten everything down once we have the lid on and have it positioned the way we want it.
Uh, so you'll note that the lid mounts with the two 440 screws in the back and there's two holes in the middle and the front. Um, those mount to the, uh, the mount for the weapon motor. Um, that's not included in the basic chassis kit because it's included in the Beater Electronics kit. Um, so if you bought just the chassis by itself, um, you'll need to source this piece on your own or use whatever solution you're using. If you purchase the guts kit with it, this is also included. Uh, the reason we include it here in the video is because it's just generally easier to put it on now um, than later. And it attaches from the bottom with two 632 screws. And then we'll move on to attaching the, the drive motor plates on the side. These attach with two plastite screws on each side and then they have two more holes provisioned for the repeat drive motors. You can mount either the, the brush motors, which we include with the guts kit, or if you upgrade to the brushless motors, um, they'll also mount in the same place using the included M2 four millimeter screws. You can put these motor side plate or drive motor plates on pretty much any time you want. Uh, they don't really affect the order of assembly in any way. So now everything's still loose. Um, on the first time it's put together, I generally prefer to put the rear screws in first um, because that's the stuff that's going to really have some play in it and then put the front screws in. So the rear screws are 440 quarter inch, front screws are 632 quarter inch and once you get these in uh, I tighten, do the, like, the final tightening on it and I start with the side walls um, and I get those all tightened down really well from the sides and then just go around one by one, uh, tightening all the remaining screws on the chassis. And uh, once you get everything tightened uh, the way you want it, and you're, you're ready to go do your first fight, um, take every screw out one at a time, lock tight it, and put it back in. Because um, the last thing you want to do is have a bunch of vibration in your robot that has a screw back out and then your some part of your robot is hanging out where it shouldn't be hanging and it tends to break things. So make sure you lock tight all the screws. Now the remaining screws sitting on the on the, the work pad there you see the two long ones with the nuts, those are for attaching the Fingertech power switch. Um, when you do the install, then you'll notice the little circle hole on the left side of the lid. That's where the power switch mounts and it's that's the access hole to turn the robot on and off. Uh, pictures for installing the guts um, are included in the printed instructions. Um, they're not included here because people can do various configurations depending on their preference. Uh, so thank you for buying the kit. Uh, it took, we worked on this for probably a couple years from our first one pound beater to where it is now. And we think this is a, a pretty easy to work with kit for you.